This review has been brought to you in part by Main Irish Airsoft. Mag 4 and the M4 mag release. Hey there, welcome back to Ari's Airsoft. Uh, today we are reviewing this, it's the Umrex G36CV. Um, so, being the Umrex um, piece, so it's the OEM by something else, but the big thing is with Umrex you get trademarks. HK trademarks in this case, reasonable, okay, it says Cal 6mm BB. A lot of the purists would prefer to see 556, and you also get the Lonex SA on, or the Umrex, should I say, SA on we own the trademarks, yada yada. Uh, not particularly keen on that, but look, it is what it is. Um, this is a nice, externally, this is a nice solid gun. It's well made, lots of nice features. I really, really do like the new stock on this. The original skeleton stock that I'm used to seeing on G36s was nice, but I do like the fact that this is extendable. Rubber butt pad, rubber cheek rest. It is nice and comfortable to actually shoulder. I do like it. Um, and that adjustability does make it more customizable for um, more players. Uh, this gun has electric blowback. Now one of the weak points I've seen on other G36s is the charging handle. The charging, assemble, charging assembly and the charging handle itself are all metal in this case. So, you know, they're reasonably robust. They're also ambidextrous as are the selector switch and the mag release, all ambidextrous. Um, this gun weighs quite a bit more than other G36s I have used in the past, obviously because there's more metal gone into it. Um, I've used this for a good bit of the morning's play here at Red Bar. Initially I was very disappointed in it, considering this is a high-end gun, I was disappointed in the range, disappointed in the consistency. Now, typically that's down, going to be down to the hop rubber and the barrel. Now, as we went through the morning, the grouping has gotten a little bit better and the range, the consistency on the range has improved a little bit, so I'm guessing the hop rubber is bedding in a little bit. I'm still a little bit disappointed in it because this is a high-end gun, okay? Um, the recommended retail, and retail on this is something around 400 euros. Uh, here in Ireland, but I believe it's available on special offer at the minute for a little bit less than that from MIA. So, you know, because it's a high end gun, I've got to compare it to other high end guns that are on the market, and that's why I'm a little bit disappointed with it. Now, you know, lots of nice features. I certainly didn't have, have, any, didn't have any issue with uh, misfeeds or anything like that. Um, so, you know, it was consistent in the way it fired, but I don't know, I just wanted the experience to be a little bit more special because it is a high-end gun. Now if you're a fan of blowback, this gun is equipped with electric blowback and it does give a fair amount of feedback. I'll just show you now. So it's a nice little kick off. Now for me the noise is maybe a little bit too much, a little bit too loud. But you know, for overall effect I suppose, if you're going for something more realistic, you can't argue with it, it does what it says on the tin. Um, typical G36 mag capability, you can lock them together. Uh, we went out with two mags today, so we locked the two of them together just for ease of use. Um, there's not a lot more I can say really, you know. Um, really nicely built. I'm not 100% sure who the OEM is. Uh, I believe it's Aries, but I couldn't, you know, couldn't swear to that. Um, but externally very nice. A little bit disappointed, as I say, in the range and, and the consistency of the trajectory. But you know, most people who buy high-end guns are typically going to put in a Type R barrel, change the hop over to the one of their own preference. So maybe I'm being a little bit picky on that. So that's my take on it. Overall, a nice gun. But maybe could do a little better. So I'm in Chris's back cave now, and uh, we're going to crack open the gearbox to have a look and see what they've done internally, but. Let's just run through a quick uh, number on the externals. Externally, this is a solid, solid gun. A lot of the G36s out there tend to be of this same nylon fibre, this kind of polymer uh, plastic material. 
but they don't tend to be very, very thick walled and they always feel a little bit brittle and they feel that if you were to take a tumble, they'd snap. Not so on this piece and so it shouldn't be. This is, as I said, a very high end piece and because it's high end, it should be all bells and whistles and in fairness, they don't disappoint. Running from the top, I'm not going to go through all what's plastic and what's not because that makes for a very boring video and I know a lot of uh, reviewers out there do it but I just does, it doesn't do it for me. There is um, a little bit of metal on the gun, not too much, but one of the features that's really, really cool is the charging handle here is all metal and it feels really, really solid. One of the weak points of a lot of the G36s out there is the fact that the charging handle is made of that nylon fibre. And a lot of younger guys, especially when they're playing with these particular guns, they like to slap this back and give it the old heave-ho so that they look real hardcore. That creates a weakness in the charging handle and a lot of them break. I don't think that's going to happen in this particular model. Yep. Now, typical to the G36 style, there's a pin that holds the battery here. It locks in nice and tight and that gives you full access then to your, uh, your battery compartment. There's not a huge amount of room in here. You will fit in an 8.6 nickel metal hydrate battery. 9.6 is going to be way too tight. So if you want to go up to a higher um, ampage unit, you're really going to have to look at maybe putting in a LiPo. But here's a dinky little feature. Now I was wondering what the hell these sort of little holes were for. They've got four of them. But there's four major body, body pins that hold this particular piece together. And they all slot in here. And you can push them right through to keep them safe. So while you're in field, if you're having to do some fiddling work uh, on your battery, you can quickly slot in your, your pin here, you won't lose it. Uh, and then it's just a simple case of popping it back out and into the gun. They're the kind of features you expect on a high-end gun. And in fairness to Ares, if they did make this particular model, it, it, it is very, very typical of Ares you know, to, to have thought out of those little features. Um, when we crack her open, you're going to see as well, when it's cracked open, uh, they have a lovely little uh, dinky way of changing the spring. There's a great swap out system in, in place. Another really nice feature in this, it has uh, a working bolt catch. So it actually, the bolt catch is just in here next to the trigger. And it gives you then full access to a very responsive G36 drum style hop unit. And then it's just a matter of letting it go again and off you go. Moving back to the stock, um, this is where the ergonomics really come into play. Has a real sort of nice little cheap razor uh, in sort of that hard foamy material. Um, butt, pad, butt pad here for shouldering. It fits really, really comfortably. It's completely movable up. It has, I think, about three different positions that it moves into. So again, a very, very ergonomic gun. Very, very comfortable. Lightweight because of the, the polymer body and um, rate of fire is average, it's not fantastic, but that's because of the full electric blowback system that they've employed. And there is a bit of a kick when you fire this. You can actually feel it sort of in your shoulder and there's a very uh, audible noise from the blowback. So as I said, we're gonna pop inside and have a look at the internals, but from the get-go, the externals of this particular model are superb. And if I was actually gonna go and purchase a G36C, I have to say, I wouldn't look any further because this looks the part and uh, it feels very, very solid. This gun has a quick spring change feature from the easily accessed gearbox. Just remove this screw, undo the plate and remove the spring. One box of gears. Hi right, Chris, uh, first observations. Looks okay. Stainless bushings, 7mm bearing. And don't forget. A micro switch. Oh, it is a micro switch, is it? Yep. Yep, there. So that means you can't fit a MOSFET? No. You get trouble in feeding and firing and all sorts of gizmos. And that also then makes it um, awkward. Yeah, you can't stick normal uh, trigger contacts into it if it does happen to break. You will have to buy an RS wording though. Uh, 
Yeah, I may be so bold. But they are King Arms Gears. You reckon? Yep. S and T. So it's not even Aries internals. Yep. <laughs> Maybe that's not a bad thing. <laughs> S and T. S and T. I don't know S and T. They're definitely identical to King Arms Gears. Right, there is your micro switch, and there's definitely no room in there to squeeze a standard trigger system into it. How's the piston look? It's a bad seal. Bad seal, yeah. No, you shouldn't be able to do that, really. Mm. That should actually lock. Components look okay. Good. Definitely should be able to do that. Though. So Standards. that's your first look at at the inside of this box. What's your first impression? Yeah. Micro switch, bit of a pain. Yep, yeah, definitely. Piston, the air seal could be better. Piston could, could be better. Could be a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Um, gears look fairly solid. Well, I've used King Arms gears and a lot of things, and I've never had any problems with them. They look exactly like King Arms. They just have S and T stamped onto the back of them. Right. 18 to 1, so it's a standard gear ratio. Yeah. Um, trigger looks. Casing looks fairly solid. Yeah, looks fairly thick. And the bushings are stainless steel. Stainless steel so. where it should be. Shimming looks okay. Feels okay as well. So. But this is a quality piece, and as Mark has already alluded to, the stock here is very sexy looking, very different to most of the uh, G36Cs on the market. Most of them have this sort of skeleton style stock. I actually prefer this style myself. Um, the range, <laughs> Mark sort of gave out about the range a little bit and I would agree it's not up there with some of the high-end guns that we're using, like the GMP guns that we're using. Um, but what I will say, this is designed primarily for close quarter battling and at that this will serve very, very well. The range was acceptable. Uh, I wasn't as pedantic about range as Mark was. I thought the range was quite okay considering it was a small gun. But as Mark has already said, we have to like with like, and a lot of the high-end guns we're playing with just are pipping this uh, by, by a considerable amount on their range and grouping. So, all in all, it looks fabulous. Uh, I have to say, I do like the feel of it. I, I really do like the electric blowback. I know Mark said it's a bit loud, but I think if you're going to have an electric blowback, it should be a little bit of a kick to it. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, the construction, as I said, is superb. And I reckon if you sort of do go the extra mile and purchase this, I don't think it's going to let you down to any sort of time soon. But we only have it on a short-term lens, so we can't tell you the longevity of how long it's going to last. But as I said, look-wise, it looks great. Uh, Playing-wise, I have to say I thought it was quite good. Uh, the range wasn't as consistent as Mark has already said. But do you know what? If you're in the market for a G36C and you have a few shekels in the pocket, I certainly would be looking at the HK version here by Umarez. So this has been Oddie's Airsoft and uh, we'll talk soon. And the other nice little feature is it has a working bolt catch. It has a working now. It has a full uh, I'm looking gazelle coming up the stairs, aren't I? Gazelle, yeah. Carrying a fucking elephant. Oh, there's no need for that. Okay, externally, what makes 